Okay, and today's iPad painting tutorial, I'm going to do some islands in the ocean with a sunset and sort of clouds, a nice sky feature. I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad. If you want to follow along with the same colors, well, all you need to do is go down to the video description. In the description, there is either the hexadecimal codes, which are the codes you need to put into this section of the value area. Press enter, a color will appear there. Drag it or just tap it into this area and you can start to construct your own color palette. Or I'll put a link in the description anyway and it will take you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free. In terms of the brushes I'm going to use, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to go to the airbrushing and I'm going to use the soft brush now. I've just been having a play around with the brush on a previous painting. So just to prove the point, that I don't do anything strange with my brushes for my tutorials. I'm just going to reset it and it goes back to the standard settings that you will find within Procreate. So the first thing I'm going to do on my first layer, is I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to pick this color and I'm just going to drag it into the canvas like that. So that's filled the canvas. It stopped it being quite so intimidating. We got rid of the whiteness. I'm going to create a new layer, which goes on top. Go back to my colors. I'm going to go to this color now, which is the second color in. If we go to the color disk, we can see roughly where the colors lie. So I'll show you the first color as well, squarely within the blue, but it's a very grayed out version. This is very much more in the orange. Again, it's a grayed out version, but it's pushing it in the warmer palette. So with this color, we're going to go to the soft airbrush, like I say. Nothing changed. I'm going to put the brush quite big for this first stage. It's around 15% and we'll put it a little down from 100%. We'll put it at 70%. And I'm just going to start somewhere about two thirds of the way up, putting some of that tone in there. But I want it to be diffused and I want it to be soft focus. So I'm going to go to the adjustments, I'm going to go to the Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer, and then I'm going to slide it across and it starts to bring more of that warm tone in. I'm gonna keep working into that layer, so I'm gonna stick with the same color. I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm just gonna bring it a little bit lower to about halfway this time. I'll go over it twice. Again, it's on the 15% size and the 70% opacity. Go to my adjustments again, to the Gaussian blur. Once I've the whole layer, and again, I'll blur it in. Go back to my colors. I'm going to pick the third color in this time, and we're gonna keep the settings the same, but this time we're just gonna go about a third of the way up and do the same again, but twice. Go to our Gaussian blur, take the whole layer and blur it in. This time about the 40%, like that. I'm gonna to go to my layers. If you look at it and you decide that it's coming too far down, which I am doing at this point, I'm gonna to go to my transform tool. Probably best to do it on the free form. Push it up like this. And I want this brown area just to be under the halfway line. So the halfway line's in between this darker warm color and this lighter warm color. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. On this layer, I'm going to go to the next row of colors. I will come back to those other colors and we have two darker colors at the bottom as well. But I'm gonna to go to this second color in. And you can see it's an orange, but it's a very pastel version of that orange. I'm gonna turn the size of the brush down a little bit to around 10%. And I'm also going to turn the opacity really quite low for this. It's around 15%. And I'm going to decide where I want the sun. So I want it roughly, I'm going to think in terms of the rule of thirds. So I'm going to take it about a third in. And we're going to have the sun around this area. And I'm just going to press it a couple of times where I want the sun. And then just do a larger circle around it. And press lightly to get this effect. And start to just extend the impact of that circle. Now it doesn't really matter whether this is neat because all I'm going to do again is go to my Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer, and then spread it in. I just want to start bringing in some sense that there's a lot of light in that area. Deselect the tool, go back and reclaim that center area. I'm only temporarily putting in a bright spot. I'm going to really emphasize that a little later on, but I'm just going to create another layer, go back to my colors. So I'm going to start with this color next. And I'm going to start thinking where to put my clouds. I want some clouds cutting across, slightly obscuring the setting sun. So the sun is starting to go behind the clouds. But I'm going to reduce the size of the brush to around 4%. And I'm going to keep it quite low. It's around the 15%. And I just want to start placing in the suggestion of a bank of clouds that's cutting across. So maybe it just clips the bottom of the sun. And then maybe at a slight angle. 
and cuts across, across like this. So perhaps you use a slightly circular motion for this. So I'm just going over it and rather build it up quite gradually rather than having the opacity on a large amount and it just ending up too blocky I prefer to build it up in softer layers so I'll keep it on the reduced opacity at around 15% and start building it in gradually. Now I want to have the suggestion that there's some broken parts that are coming off I'm going to make more of a feature of broken parts in that area but even on areas over here we can have some broken sections bits coming away. Some suggestion of texture coming in there. So I'm going to create another layer on top. I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to go to this color here which is the last color on the bottom row. I'm going to keep the setting of the opacity at 15% but I'm going to reduce the size of that brush to 2% and I just want to start going along the top edge of some of these cloud areas as they work towards the sun that it's going to be going in front of. So certainly this warmer orange tone is going to be what you see at the top edge as it moves further away. As it moves further in we're going to go even brighter with the colours but certainly this orange tone is going to start appearing on the top edge of this cloud bank. We may as well start off with a, a base of this colour and then we can go over it. We can use it just to bring out some extra shapes and texture and we'll probably start to do that around some of the edges of these breakaway shapes as well. So I'll zoom in a little bit just to show you that I'm still being quite rough but we're just after the, the effect really. So we're just going around some of the imaginary clumps and round shapes and then maybe filling in some of this area too. It's going to be generally quite a lot lighter so we're filling in some of this orange tone. I'm really going to reclaim some of this with you know for the sun area a little later on. At this stage it's just about getting closer to the kind of colour schemes that we want in that area so I definitely want this to be warmer and a lighter tone so I'm just adding a little bit more of the orange. We can start to make it work a little bit later. So I'm just adding here some of the suggestion of broken clouds at the bottom there. They're going to be a little bit further back but they're closer to the horizon which means they're lower down because they're further away. So generally things that get closer to the horizon tend to be further away. And actually this, these touches of orange are probably enough because the dark tones don't tend to extend to the very distant objects. So we're going to use some of that darker tone mainly for the, the islands that we're going to put into the scene and for areas on the cloud where they're the closest to you as a viewer. So we're just doing a suggestion of some broken shapes here underneath and they're going to be slightly more distant cloud banks. We really don't need to go too much into detail, you're just keeping just some wispy kind of rough blobs and shapes. Okay, so I'm going to create another layer. I prefer to keep things on lots of different layers, just prevents you from feeling like you've messed anything up and if you do then you know you can identify which layer it's on, the errors and change that layer. So I've gone to the darker blue tone now and I'm going to stay with the 2% size and I'm going to stay with a 15% opacity but on this new layer I'm just going to concentrate on working on the inside of some of these cloud areas now. So I want to just start darkening up some of these. So again now I'm really starting to articulate some of the shapes, some of the broken texture that come away from these main cloud areas. So we've got the main shape here for example so we can start to fill most of that in dark. Again maybe keep the, the shape in a circular motion, keep that fluffy texture. But maybe when we do get close to that edge we can just have a couple of pieces that seem to just fragment away from the edge. Maybe we'll turn the size of the brush up as we get further away because we want to just 
having it fading out away really. All of the, the sharpness is going to be around the sun area. So it really brings everything into a focus because you create a contrast of the light and dark areas. As we get further into this area, we can just use more soft brushes. We're not going to get a crisp edge on anything. So we're just focusing our smaller brush sizes for this center area. So as we get over here, we can just increase the size of the brush, which I have to 4%. Start to be a little looser, fill it in. If you notice a little later on that you can still, you know, you can see some of the brush overlap area and you're not happy with that, you can always go to the smudge, put it on soft brush, change the size of the suits. So I'm just making it small, so I'm putting it around 3%, put it around 50% opacity, and just go over areas that you don't like. The fact that you can see the overlap of the brushes and just smudge it in really, it just gives you a nice softer look. But we'll worry about that a little later, and that's just a fine tuning element. So we're back on the brush and we're back on the, what size were we on? 2% and 15% opacity. So we'll just build up some of this dark tone. Maybe reserve some of the even darker bits towards the bottom part. Let's turn the size of the brush up a bit more for this bit because we're getting further away. So back up to 4% size. As I get closer to that orange shape, just start to slow down, just get a little bit more careful. Let's work over this side as well. So I'm going to extend some of that dark tone over here. Maybe this bank of cloud can stop at around that point and then it just fades off. Maybe we can reduce the size of the brush a little bit again to 2%. That just have some sharper detail of cloud fragments in this center area. When we add some bright sunshine, we'll probably create an effect that just bleaches it out a little bit, but there's no harm in defining it a little bit now. So maybe there is a section that cuts across right in front of the sun. And then some broken bits here. Something like that. Let's go to our colors. I'm gonna go back a few colors to this, which is still quite a dark color, but you can see it's a much warmer color. And I'm gonna go back into that area and just use that to start building up some of the color in this area as well. Again, I'm not changing layer. I'm still working on the dark tone layer here. Maybe I'll reduce the size of the brush to the lower end of 2%. Stick on the 15% opacity, but just really sharpen up some of these edges again. So maybe on these edges where it starts to fragment away, we've still got a darker tone, but it's perhaps a little bit warmer because it's getting more of the light. There isn't one way to do textured clouds. It's a little bit of trial and error. And I don't think you should necessarily copy the exact shapes that I'm going for. I'm trying to show you how to build an overall effect and then you can interpret that however you choose. Okay, I feel like we need to start building in a lot more light and warmth above the clouds now. So I want this color to, to start to warm up and brighten up above the cloud there. Let's so go back to our colors. I'm going to actually use this orange color again. Go back to the layer that had the sun on it. I'm going to turn my brush to about 8% but I'm gonna have it really quite low. I'm gonna have it about 5% opacity. And it's behind the layers that I've just created. So I'm just going to start building up some of this orange tone. It's not really getting rid of where the sun is now. We know where that's going to be, but I'm just starting to build in some of this warmth and light. In fact, I'm even gonna turn the size of the brush up to around 10%, even bigger. And just extend it, especially in this area, a little bit up. We can have it not really extending into this area as much, and certainly not up here, whereas immediately above the sun, we can have that going a little bit higher. We could even go back to our colors, go to this second color in, turn the size of our brush down quite low to around 3%, keep it on the low opacity, and just maybe have the suggestion cutting in here that there's just a few wisps of cloud that are being picked up by the sun. Maybe just keep it as a wispy area like that. I wouldn't really crystallize that wouldn't sharpen that up too much just a suggestion of a little bit there go back to our colors 
I'm actually going to do something very similar, but we're now with the yellow, but I'm going to go over this area. So I'm going to turn the size of the brush back up. Again, we're still on the same layer that had the sun on it, but we're just going up to around the 10%. We're still on very low. In fact, I'm going to turn this even lower to 3%. And I'm just going to concentrate my yellow tone right in the center area here. And I'm going to allow it to go into this area. So now it's starting to come through any gaps that we may have left in the cloud area. I'm going to create another layer immediately above where we did that. And I'm going to go to my white. I'm going to turn the size of that down to around 3%. And I'm going to put it up to around 25% approximately. And I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit more sharpness now where the sun's going to be. And instantly it starts to bring the overall effect together. So we're still going to keep pushing this in that direction, but you can see just by pushing the contrast now, it's instantly made a lot more sense of that scene. But there's still a lot more we can do with it to refine it and to just improve it further. So I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to go back to this next color. We're not going to do it on that actual sun layer. We'll go back a layer and we'll turn the size of the brush to 2% and we'll turn it a little bit back down to 20%. And using the sun now as a guide in terms of setting the, the brightness, we're going to use the slightly reduced bright color just to start picking out some of the top edges as we move slightly away from the sun. In fact, I'm even going to reduce the size of the brush further. So we're going to go to the bottom end of 2%. There's a little bit of give at the bottom end of 2% and the top end of 2%. So we'll put it at the bottom end of 2% and we're at the 20% opacity. So as we just move away from the edges of the sun, we're going to use this just to highlight the top edge of the the clouds as it moves away, both left and right. But we're going to really do that along that top edge and then we just have it disappearing over here. I'm going to go back to my orange color. I'm going to turn the size of the brush up. I really want to start adding more of that orange underneath that cloud bank. So I'm going to put it at around 8%, but I'm going to turn the opacity down again, quite low to about 10%. And I'm just going to start bringing that orange in to this area and have it affecting on this underneath area. I'm pressing lightly as I go so it starts to fade out. Okay, we'll come back to the sky. I think we're getting somewhere with it, but we can come back to that a little later. I think what I'm gonna concentrate on now is the impact that that sun is having on the water when it reflects. So I'm going to pick my horizon point. I'm gonna do it on a new layer. We may as well keep it next to where we've done the sun. And I'm gonna to go to my colors and I'm gonna use this yellow color. I'm going to turn the size of the brush quite low just because I'm going to start cautiously. 2% and I'm also keep it on the 10% opacity. And I want to go immediately below it. And I'm going to start setting some areas perhaps where it's just really reflecting back from the water. So I can just do some bands initially. And then maybe go back to my colors. Maybe use this orange. Maybe have it soften in where it first makes contact. Maybe we can have some of that orange in, on the in-between in the gaps and around the very edge. I can send it left and right, soften it in a little bit. Maybe we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. In fact, the whole layer, just blur it in a little bit and then we can go back into it and start refining again. I'm gonna go back to my bright colors, back to the yellow, Turn it down even more, so we're at the lower end of 2%, and maybe just turn it up a little bit to 15%, and start to sharpen in again. Some of the bits where we're reflecting the sun back. So I'm keeping it almost as lines. So I'm having a very faint, thin line on top, then a slightly brighter, thicker line underneath it. Concentrating most of it towards the center, letting it fade out at both edges. Leave a gap. Maybe have a thinner line this time. Doesn't matter if they're just slightly leaning, doesn't matter, I wouldn't say. Leave another gap. Build up the intensity again. Try and make sure that it's roughly below. Have another gap. Maybe we can increase the size of the brush as we come further down to 3%. And then I'm going to start having it maybe just start to disappear around this point. 
pressing lightly now to fade that in. If you're not happy with it, you can go to the Gaussian Blur. Maybe you try the pencil setting this time, and you can see you've got a slider here. We'll probably put it at around the 50%. Turn the size of the brush up to, say, 6%. Opacity at 50%, and just start to maybe blur this in, see if that makes any difference. Okay, just like that. I'm going to go back to our colors. I'm going to introduce some of this white. Let's go for it. Turn the size of the brush down to 2%, the opacity down to 20% or thereabouts. And I'm going to pick this center area, just start to bring out the real brightness now. It is the sun we're reflecting, so let's not be too timid. It is going to be bright. Try and line up. I feel like I'm leaning off to the side, so let me move it further along. We are on a separate layer, so if you feel like you've done that, then you can always just nudge it that way a little bit. It'll make more sense of it. I've used the transform tool, just moved it along. Better now. It's always good just to sit back, re-examine how is it working, what you're doing, is it making sense, or are you starting to lose something important? Go back to our colors. I'm going to use some of this orange color now, but I'm going to put it quite big, so I'm going to put it at around 6% size. And I'm also going to turn it down to around 5% opacity. And I'm just going to start, in fact, let's put a layer underneath. So we'll create a new layer and we'll put it underneath that layer. So now we've got that layer and underneath it, we're creating some orange. So anything I'm adding now will be adding to it rather than taking away from it. It won't be going over the top of it. So I'm just going to start going around the edges just to soften that in a little bit. And then as we go down, we can, we can just start to have that disappear a little bit. Maybe just extend that a little bit, left and right, here and there. Okay, so I'm going to create another layer. Lots of layers on this piece, but sometimes that works really well. We're going to go to our colours. I'm going to go to this darkest colour now. This is going to work really well to create that drama and, and contrast. So we're going to be careful with this. We're going to turn this down to 2%, put it up to, what should we say, around 60%. And I'm going to start putting in now. In fact, let's move this so we want it above layer 8 where we created, so it's really going to be dark. And I'm just going to start creating a feature that's in the water where we've got some kind of island or landmass. So it's slightly curved at the bottom, it gives the sense that it's more of a round shape. You don't want it completely flat, it wants to be encroaching this way and it therefore you give the sense that if you looked at it from above, it's round therefore it, it bows slightly in the centre, bends down towards you. Then you can have the top of that shape. Maybe it's connected to smaller versions, smaller little islands. So it's your world, you decide what's going to be there. In true Bob Ross style, let's, uh, let's have a little fun creating our own world. Uh, let's sharpen the size of the brush down. So I, I use words like sharp, and I, I realise it's not a pencil, but I always think of it in terms of sharpening a pencil when I'm reducing the size of that brush. So let's just sharpen up some of the details. I suppose that's another aspect to it, is that you're just creating a sharper edge to your details as well. So it might be you do some suggestion of buildings, or maybe it just could be rock features or trees, greenery. You don't really need to make that decision other than just create some suggestion that there's something happening on that surface. Something like that. We'll go to the next colour along, which is a lighter colour. And I'm just going to use it to break up the flatness of that a little bit, just to create some noise. You're barely going to be able to see that. But if I just have a slight change in that black tone here and there, and we'll use some of the warmer tone on it as well in the center area. But I'm only using it just to break it up a little bit. Stops it being just so dead and flat. I feel like we probably need more of these islands. So I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to go to... What should we choose? We'll choose that colour 
and maybe I'll, I'll pick some land masses to go on the horizon. So if we know that the, the horizons where the, the reflections suddenly stop, so we can follow that line across and start to introduce from the edge. Maybe we need to turn the opacity down for that actually. We'll turn it down to around 40%. So we're bringing that in across and maybe we'll turn that down even more to around 30% for something over here. Follow that across. Keep at this quite flat, whereas this bowed, the distant ones are going to be very much flat on the horizon. Now, if I just turn the opacity down really quite low to around 10% and turn the size of the brush up to 3%, I think at this point we can just start to bring in some suggestions that the water is going to, it's going to ripple, it's going to have a change of direction in the water, which will make some bits appear slightly darker. Maybe we can coincide that with the, the break that we have here. So we can bring that dark tone in and we can join it up with the, the break of tone there. So the ripples, the wind starts to affect in the surface in a different way. It'll just stop it reflecting in the same way. So we'll get a darkening of tone just like that. So it's not a land mass, it's just a, a ripples and movement on the water that changes the color. And we'll just start bringing some of it in here as well. If you don't do this kind of thing, it's just gonna look like floating islands. You need to ground it with a bit more texture on the surface of the water. Ground's the wrong word really, but you understand what I mean. Uh, to reduce the size of the brush to 2% and I will do something similar for wherever we've got a break. Just start to bring that across a little bit. Subtly, not too much. Maybe an extra line up there. And then we could start to think about doing something similar nearer to us as well. So we can increase the size of the brush. We're going to have, in fact, let's change the color again. We're gonna go to this end color and we need to start bringing in some reflections now of the, the structures that we've created in the water so it's going to be most here when we have the height when it gets quite low to the water obviously we're going to have less of a shadow there too and when we get to the light area we're not going to have the same kind of reflection it's reflecting the sun so it breaks up and has priority over any of the other reflections. So you do the dark reflection when it's close to the structures in a darker area, but as soon as the reflection of the sun comes in it, it takes priority. So we're gonna increase the size of the brush. I feel like it's very flat over here. So let's just start to bring in some extra texture break it up a little bit more. Have some sort of sense of waves going across there. Now another thing that I'm going to do, if I just consider which layers I'm working on now, I'm gonna to go to, in fact I'll stay on this layer, I'll create another layer and put it underneath that, because it's underneath all my top layers of clouds and stuff anyway. I'm gonna to go to my colors, I'm gonna to go to the orange color, I'm gonna turn the size of the brush to around 3%. I'm going to put it really low opacity, so around 3% opacity. Now I'm going to tri start creating effects of sunbeams that are going on underneath this cloud area. So it's, I want it to be subtle, so obviously it's going to have to come straight from the sun. So what I suggest is that you do it underneath here and just start to do it once or twice. Again, think about how it lines up. Do another one once or twice, maybe over here, maybe just once over here. And just wherever you think there may be sunlight that could potentially get through, you can add. And you can also do like thicker ones as well. So you might have a large section here where quite a lot of the sun is coming through as a, a wider beam. Now obviously as it gets further away, it gets wider. We can have a widening off here. Again, all the angles need to go to that vanishing point of the sun. And so if we're doing something over here, you can have a really steep angle where it lines up like that. Now if you feel like it's gone too strong, which I absolutely do there, 
let's get rid of that. Maybe we'll put it back in, but we'll stop it around this point. Now you can easily go too far with an effect like this. It can look a little exaggerated over the top, so just be careful. Perhaps it's gonna look more sensible if we go back up a few layers. So let's think where our lighter oranges and stuff were. So we can go at the top on layer five, and I think it only really works if the sun is starting to go over that point a little bit. And therefore, it's going to sneak around some of these gaps. So we'll start to go on top of this with the orange now, just to knock this dark tone back. Maybe we can turn the opacity up a little bit because it's fighting now with this darker tone. We'll go over this to knock it back. And we can start bringing in generally some of this lighter orange tone as well. Ah, that's what it is. We did a, a top layer, isn't it? I wonder why it wasn't quite working. So we'll go back to the orange and we'll do it on the very top layer now. And that also means that I probably need to go a little bit more carefully now because it's suddenly going to seem very impactful. So we'll just go over that a little bit, soften it in a little bit, like I say. And now the sun's starting to go beyond that point and that justifies the use of a, a sunbeam in this area, perhaps. But it's still a little too orange. So we'll go onto that, that color here, like I said. We're not changing the brush settings, we're still on 3%, we're still on 6%, or very low anyway, 5-6%. Start to bring this new colour over the top, like so. Knock some of this back here, because whenever you, you get something very next to the sun, it, the sun's going to be more powerful, it's going to start chipping away at the hard edges that you might have created for something that goes right next to it. So you can use like the yellow now, just to start to break that down a little bit. If you feel like you've done it too strong and too vibrant, perhaps you could go back to your white. Turn the size of the brush down to 2%. Just start to use that white to chip away, to extend the absolute brightness of that sun. Just start to extend it and feed it in a little bit to other areas. So I'm gonna reduce that even further to 1%. I'm going to have a little bit of the Sense of cloud that's just picking up some of that light on either side here as well. Maybe we can have some wisps of cloud that are just starting to collect that light up here. So we're on the very top now, which is good because we're starting to add fine tuned details. So sometimes on the very top layers, that's the best place to put some of the later details. So we'll stick to this orange. We're on a small brush. We'll put it up to 2%. We'll have it around the 10%. And I'm just going to use it now to pick out the top edge of some of these clouds with the orange. So maybe it's on the, the underneath of some of these clouds even. Because the sun, if you think about it, although it seems like, well, it's above the clouds, it's at the same time above the clouds as we look at them, but it's obviously much further away. So it is still coming from behind those clouds. So as much as it will pick up highlights on the very top, because it's behind generally is also going to illuminate the bottom edge of those clouds too. So you can't think of it as a bright ball that's just perched on top of the clouds, obviously it isn't. It's very much outside of our atmosphere and many, many, many miles away, clearly. So it goes through space and through our atmosphere and really it highlights the edges of both the top and the bottom of the cloud in areas. Now I'm just gonna increase the size of the brush a little bit to 2%, 3%, just have it collect a little bit of the highlights at the bottom, but not too much. A little bit more as we go further over here. Again, switch the colors up. So we've got this sandier, slightly more yellowed or more pastel version. So we can use that, turn the size of the brush down to 2%. If you find I can go in too, too fast at times, then don't be afraid to pause. Wait till you've caught up and then continue again. I'm just going to try something out with the sun. If we go to the sun layer, go to the adjustments, go to bloom, maybe use the pencil. We've got it on 50% there, put it up to around 4% and we'll put it up to 50% opacity. And I just want to start increasing the drama of that sun, just go by going over it. So if I just show you without that, and I show you with that, it's really helping sell that illusion. You could always do it a couple of times. I think once was enough. And you can also do that if you go to the other layers that might have a really strong colour, we'll go to our adjustments, bloom, use the pencil, we'll stay, keep all the same settings as before and see how it starts to affect other things too. 
Now, if that's what kind of thing what you're going for, but a little too dramatic, then you can always turn the size of that brush down and the opacity down and just start to do it a little bit more selectively. So you can do it for some areas, perhaps. Maybe we just, as we did before, we, we had lines that cut across, so maybe you can do the same for this. I'm gonna go back up to my top layer, just a little bit of refining now with the various different brighter colors, just to pick up on certain bits of the cloud. Gonna sharpen the brush down to 2%. Really be specific, pick up the edge of some of these clouds just to really sharpen that up. I'm only really trying to use the absolute brightest colours when it gets really close to the to the sun area. Again, we're on the top layer, so I'm using this now to just fine-tune all across the painting. I'm just starting to bring this bright tone just a little bit across the edge of anything that goes very close to this area too, because that's gonna have a similar effect than that. Maybe as we were up here, just pick up one or two of those wispy bits up there, so I'll put it on 2% and just lower the opacity to 20%. Just nudge it in that direction. I don't think I want to do anything too specific. Just give the suggestion that there's more in the sky. Back to my orange color. In fact, I'll go back to this color on the end and Let's have a look at our layers down here. I think I want to go to that layer and I think I just want to extend some of that orange, but I have a slightly more muted version as it disperses out. So maybe increase the size of the brush to 4%. We'll keep it about 20% and just extend the range of some of this warm tone, tone out a little bit. Now we can do the same with the dark tone as well up here. So we can start, especially down here, we can just start to bring in some of this dark tone, maybe reduce it down to 2%, just start bringing in some slight clarity. Don't go over to, overboard with it though. Just carefully pressing lightly. Now we haven't really got a lot of noise for the ocean, but it doesn't really matter. If you wanted to experiment with different brushes to increase the sense that there's disturbance going on in the water, then feel free to do that. I'm keeping it a little bit more straightforward, a bit more simple for this piece. Now I'm gonna use this color, reduce the size of the brush. I'm gonna to go to the top and I'm just gonna use it to bring some slight darker breaks up here as well. Push the brightness of the white a little bit more. So you judge it. I'm just increasing mine by a bit more. So I've just increased this opacity to 30%. Put it up to around 2% size, just increasing some of the whiteness in this center area just a little bit. So I'm just going to my orange color again. I'm gonna turn the size of the brush to 5% and the opacity down to around 15%. And I just want to start bringing some of that into this area just to break up some of the dark tone there, just to really emphasize how powerful and bright the sun is in that, that the effects for that area. And maybe push it a little bit further out on this edge as well. Okay, I feel I could fine tune for quite a while longer but overall the effect is pretty much achieved. If you liked following along with this tutorial and you're quite pleased with the effects and the results, make sure to tag me if you follow me on Instagram or join my Facebook group. The links for both of those things are in the description. Make sure to press the bell notification so you'll be guaranteed to be notified for any future tutorials and I shall see you back here soon. See you later.